Hey guys, welcome back to Square Box Games, and today we've got another how to play for another kids game. It is Mickey and the Beanstalk game. Uh, this is for ages four and up, two to four players, and they say it takes about 30 minutes to play. But let's check it out. All right, let's see what you get in the box here. We're going to waste no time because there is quite a bit of setup to this game. It is made for ages four and up, but I would say with everything that is set up, you definitely need someone larger than four, older than four, to set all this up. This is your instruction guide on how to set up the game and how to play it. Uh, there's a lot of components in here. So you're gonna start with the bottom map here. And then this little thing is gonna hook in and I'm not gonna fast forward this. We're gonna do this in real time so you guys can see what it takes to set this game up. Sorry, I'm doing this backwards here. And keep in mind, I have done this many, many times. If you're a first time player, this is going to take a lot longer. <laughs> but the point of the game basically is Mickey and his friends um, are trying to get food for the village down below over here by climbing up the beanstalk, which, uh, spoiler alert, ours is broken. Which is one of the reasons why this game's probably going to go away after this review. But we'll get to that soon. Set all that up. You've got a spinner here. I don't even have room for all of this. But each character, or each player, is going to take a character. And you can see that they have a, uh, a character card. Let's get this out of the way. With three spots here. So we're just going to say we're goofy here. You're going to take the goofy character and put him down there. You're going to take this, which is your lockbox, and set it to the side. You're going to have three different kinds of food tokens. These three different shapes here. And they're going to correspond to spots here up on the map. And you can see here there are spots on the ground too with certain foods. You're going to take the giant, and he is going to get put, I don't even remember where he gets put, I think he's at the lockbox right here. And then the golden harp, you also need the rest of the golden harp, she's going to go in this lockbox in one of these spots right here. I'm going to put her off to the side, we'll slide that in, and then if we need to. So we're going to take our players, we're just going to say we're playing with Goofy right now. And the first thing you're going to do is spin the spinner, and it's going to tell you a couple different things. The first thing is this number right here. That's how many spaces your character can go up. You're also going to see next to the giant face there is purple. So that's going to what, going to what, oh, if I can talk, geez, that is what is going to move the giant. So the giant is going to move to the closest purple space on this border, that it is not currently on. So it's gonna move right here. And we're gonna move four, which if I remember right, it's one spot just to go up to like vaguely right here. And then I think it may be a second move to get to either side you wanna get up on. And then a third move to get onto the board. And then from there, you can't cross the turkey here but you can move any direction. You can go back like this, you can go around. So we'll just move one here. And since we landed on that, we get to draw one of the corresponding tiles from that pile and we get that food. We're gonna take that food and put it on our character card right here, which is showing that we've got that food. Once you fill it up, well, really whatever you want, but you kind of want to fill it up to three, you can then spin, you know, let's say we get a, a three here. We can hop down and go one, two, and then three to put your character on here, which our tape is in the way. 
and then the character can spin down the beanstalk and land. This right here, this whole beanstalk, that is the gimmick of this game. This is what it's trying to focus the kid's attention on, that the characters get a spin down here. I'll be completely honest with you, this is the only thing my kids have ever cared about, is having them go down the beanstalk. And it has broken. I have super glued it multiple times. Elmer's glued it. We have used tape. It is broken. Therefore, this game is kind of useless to us. Uh, but basically, once you fill your food tiles, you can come down here and then fill corresponding foods into the locations where the villagers need to eat. For instance, right here, we've got a cheese wheel. And you can't even tell, but under here is some cheese. You also see that there are some mystery foods here. That means you, it's, a, it's a wild spot. You can put anything there. But once you fill, as a group, all the, the foods and bring the harp down to the city, you guys win the game. I have never finished a game because my kids have just gotten bored. Because the act of like figuring how many moves it takes to get up here and on, and then they run around, they just have not cared. The other thing, uh, if you choose to land on this spot here, instead of a food item, you can get a key and put the key on your one of your spots on your card and what the key does if you end up going around to here you land on the lockbox which lets you go to this lockbox here and take one item it could be food we'll get to how food gets there in a second or a golden harp which is what you really want to get to take with you and put it on one of your spots trading out the key now the giant is getting in your way to try to keep you from getting all the food. So, really, I did this backwards. When you spin here, let me go back and forth. When you spin and the giant moves, let's say you were right here. And the giant moved to where you are. He would actually steal one of your foods, I believe. And he would come off of your plate and into one of the spots on the lockbox. So, that could get filled up. And you can see here, um, they kind of vaguely talk about it a little bit. What are they talking about? I've never been, I don't think the instructions are too clear. There's the giant. If the giant moves in front of a space with the character, no matter if it's that character's turn or not, he sees them. Uh, if, it's the, if you have the golden harp, he'll take that first. Otherwise, um, he'll take a food token and put it in the empty empty spot there um basically i think if the lock box gets filled up all the way you guys will lose that's how you would lose if this gets filled up all the way otherwise you just continue to keep rolling and playing until you're able to get all of these food tokens in yet again never seen it happen because the kid's attention span is just not not in it on this game um your kids may like it uh but I feel like this game is just, it's very gimmicky. A lot of the Funko games really do have a gimmick, especially the Disney ones. Like the, the It's a Small World game, which I think is much better. I actually enjoy that game. Its gimmick is flipping the rooms back and forth. If you haven't seen that, we've got a video for that I can link. Uh, but this one, the, the whole gimmick is just the little play feature of letting the, the characters on their little notches go down this, which is broken. Um, the actual gameplay itself is, I, I don't think, very fun. Uh, and, like, it's a small world. It's fun to do, like, the matching and stuff like that. I think there's just too much going on, especially for the age, ages this is suggested for, four and up. It's, it, there's, it's, it's too much for the, the kids, I think. Um, obviously, that's just my family's experience. But they have played other games that are rated for their age, and they've enjoyed that a lot more, and we've actually finished games. But uh, I joke that this is kind of like Mousetrap, where you spend more time setting up the game than actually playing it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's quickly how to play. Like I said, I didn't really go over it too well, because I don't think this is a game that I would recommend for your family, unless you are just huge Disney fanatics. Or you're like a completionist and just wants every game that uh, this company makes or every Disney game that's out there. But 
Yeah, that's a, that's a Mickey and the Beanstalk game. Uh, the square box recommendation is find a different game. Sorry. But that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Well, there you go. That's how to kind of play Mickey and the Beanstalk. Like I said, I've yet to see a game finished. Usually the kids get bored. They just play with the gimmick of the characters going down the beanstalk and ours is broken. So that's kind of a wash. So I, I wouldn't really recommend this one. Uh, Funko has made some other good games, especially in the Disney line. The, uh, it's a small world. It's a small world game. I think is a lot better, a lot more fun. Um, like I said, the kids just, it's, it's overly complicated, I think. And it's, it's just kind of a gimmick. So I would, I'd say pass on this one. Uh, but if it's really interesting to you and you like the Mickey and the Beanstalk story and it looks fun to you, then by all means get it. Maybe your kids are going to like it. I just know my experience with my family hasn't been too good. Uh, but hopefully you guys like that overview of the game and the quick how to play. Uh, if you guys liked this, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us. We've got a bunch of different games, but we do have you know several videos of games for kids. So for families that are looking for fun board games to play together, we'll try to have some good options for you there. Uh, hit that notification bell if you don't mind. That lets you know when we come out with more videos. I'm sure you haven't heard that on YouTube before. But until then, most importantly, you go play some games.